As the world shifts from fossil fuels to renewable energy, more and more companies are entering the space to develop the next generation of electricity storage technology to maximize the power sourced by renewables. One such company is Jolion, and we're with the chief executive, Andrew Grimes, who joins us now from Sydney. Andrew, good to catch up with you. Thanks indeed for your time. I want to begin, first of all, with an overview of the, of the company. You're obviously based there in Australia. I know you've listed recently uh, in the London markets. Explain what Jolion's about. Yeah, sure. Look, Jolion um, is, is a sort of a UK Australian company. We, we have a UK parent and we were listed um, on the AIM, but we have most of our operations in Australia. And the reason for that is we, were, we are a spin out from Sydney University um, back in 2014. Um, our founder, Professor Mushmeyer, who's a professor of chemistry at Sydney University, developed some really, really exciting chemistry um, that he realised was, was really applicable to, to stationary energy storage. And um, as is sort of the model with Sydney University, a, a company was formed, the technology was spun out of Sydney University into the company and, and Sydney University took some equity. And that was sort of the, the, the origins of the company back in, in 2015. Um, our focus is on developing a new type of non-flow battery based on zinc bromide chemistry um, for that stationary energy storage, meaning energy storage that doesn't move and anything that might be a battery that's in your house up to very, very large installations supporting you know, a solar and wind farm. Uh, and what are the objectives from a shareholder point of view? You've outlined the operational objectives. Uh, what do you aim to, to do for shareholders? Having now listed on the London markets, obviously you're wanting to attract uh, investors into the business. What are you promising back? Yeah, look, we we raised um, approximately 22 million sterling through through you know, the pre-IPO and, and the IPO. And that's funding that will take us through to 2024 and a break-even point. And, and at that point, while we will be EBITDA break even, um, we'll, we'll certainly still be uh, cash flow neutral or negative, and we'll be looking to raise further funds there. But you know, I think investors have a good understanding of of the um, opportunities in in the stationary energy storage market, as well as the fact that good chemistry, um, good technology, does take a while to build up, and and so. You know, we've got very good support from, from the investment community so far who really do buy into um, the long-term objectives of the company. Uh, and is, is that all part of the reason why you listed on AIM in London? Because you felt that there was a better place possibly to raise money than in Australia? I mean, is, is, was there a, a reason specifically for London? Yeah, look, in the early days when we decided to um, go public, we, we sort of ran a parallel program for two or three months, talking to investors and brokers in Australia and talking to investors and brokers in London, because really, given our shareholder base was almost 50-50, um, both made sense to us. And, and we just got a really strong support from the UK, um, from the brokers, um, from the investors, and certainly the UK um, tax uh, structuring was, was very, very attractive to us. The, the other important thing is that we weren't the first energy storage startup um, to hit the market. There's, there's been a few, um, and, and many of our, our investors are also invested in, in some of those. And so for us, it wasn't really about reteaching um, what we're all about. Um, and we certainly found the, the investment community very well educated in the UK about what we were trying to do. Indeed, in here in the London markets, I, I talk to a lot of uh, companies that are relatively new to this relatively new space, of course, and a lot of them are concentrating their efforts on uh, batteries that are based in lithium iron. But um, but uh, July, you're going for uh, these zinc bromide batteries. How do they differ uh, from from the lithium lithium iron batteries? And what do you see as the advantages in in pursuing this particular avenue within the the technology? Yeah, look, lithium ion is a great technology. It, it was commercialized in 1990, and obviously it's been behind the enormous growth of whatever it is, smartphones, computers, and, and electric vehicles. And, and, you know, we strongly expect that lithium ion batteries um, will, will play a part in, in the future in energy storage. But when you look at lithium ion for stationary energy storage, um, it's it's good technology, but it's it's got it's got its problems. It, you know, there's a lot of growing concern 
about the safety around lithium ion batteries that the there's numerous fires um, whether they're fires in houses very large one in, in Australia of a 450 megawatt hour facility people are concerned about the safety of lithium batteries they, they are they that, that is a problem for a known weakness the other problem with lithium batteries um, they're almost not recyclable they, 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 they use what's called thin film technology and that makes them very very hard to recycle our batteries on the other hand, are very similar to lead acid in the way they're constructed, the lead acid battery that's in your car. And those batteries are recycled over 95% worldwide. And so we, we will be able to hit those sort of targets. And people understand more and more when you're putting enormous numbers of batteries out um, into stationary energy storage, you have to start thinking about what happens with them at the end of life. That's another big, big problem with lithium. The other, the other problem that lithium has, and this is one of our key strengths, is we are a very, very robust battery. That, that sort of takes two, two, has two manifestations, if you like. The first one is around charging and discharging. And you probably know from, you know, your days owning cars that if you flatten your car battery, um, it's often, not the same ever again. You'll have to throw it away and replace it. And, and similar with, with lithium batteries, they don't like to be run down to, to flat. Our batteries, on the other hand, love that. It's actually a chemical reset that's good for the battery. So they can be stored flat for six months, they can be run flat, and they'll be stronger when you recharge them back up. So that's a real key advantage. And the other thing about um, our battery is it's very, very happy to run across a very broad set of temperature range. So that means, you know, 10 degrees up to 50 degrees and even beyond, um, our batteries are happily chugging along. And, you know, you contrast that with lithium ion, nearly all the lithium ion facilities, the large ones that are going out into the field, have got very, very complicated, expensive to run and install um, what we call HVAC, um, you know, air conditioning systems to maintain their temperatures between very tight range. So, so look, it's not, it's not really intended to be a lithium bashing exercise, but it's just that our chemistry brings some really unique advantages that more and more users are understanding that, you know, as we reach cost parity with lithium, these advantages around safety, recyclability, robustness, and so on come into play. And, and it's why we feel very, very confident that we'll be, be able to play a part. The other important thing that people need to understand is the enormous amount of lithium that is going into the EV market, the electric vehicles. And, and you know, we're not trying to target that market. It's not our thing. Um, but because of the growth of EVs, the lithium supply chain is getting so squeezed at the moment. The cost of lithium um, raw material at the moment has risen by nearly 500% in the last 12 months. And we're seeing we're seeing very, very long lead times, you know, 18 months and above for, for lithium battery systems. So, so what you're seeing now is, is what we think is the start of a, a mega crunch, if you like, of the lithium supply chain that's only going to continue because so many governments, including your own, are starting to mandate the rollout of, um, of internal combustion engines. But on, on your website, you do say at the very top, you, you have a choice of of, of, of areas you can look at, stationary and mobile storage. So to be sure, you are going into both areas though, aren't you? Mobile. Yeah, look, it's a good question. It, it's a good question. And, and, and often people, when they consider, you know, and if you think about the origins of, of the company, it is certainly around what we call stationary energy storage. And that's where our zinc bromide chemistry and technology will be focused. <coughs> But we also have a division that we've established um, actually supporting lithium batteries. We, we have what's called, it's called a performance additives division. So we're not looking to make batteries, but we are making um, battery additives to improve the performance of lithium based batteries, to make them safer, to make them more energy dense and, and to improve their cycle life. And, and so we, we see it's, it's in, a, in a sense a, an each way bet. Um, it's in a sense, um, securing what we think is is the lithium sort of, if they've got a weak spot, the weak spot of, of stationary energy storage with our zinc bromide, as well as helping lithiums roll out into the mobile energy market. I'm interested as well, if I can, Andrew, to pick up on some recent news uh, for July. And, and uh, just last week, you announced that the Madrid-based uh, energy company Axiona Energia was trailing, uh, trialing your batteries. Um, 
elaborate more on what's what this deal is likely to be worth and what are they doing first of all which sort of battery they're looking at and, and why yeah, look, that was great news for us. It, it's a project that we've been working on for, for 18 months or so, and, and it was great to be able to finally announce it. Um, Asiona are the world's largest pure play renewable company, um, the, the greenest um, energy company in the world, um, and they've got deployments approaching 20 gigawatts of, of green energy. So very, very important player in this field and certainly one of the leaders, a real genuine um, figurehead or spearhead in, in, in this renewable area. They, they conducted a worldwide search looking for breakthrough batteries, the, the next technology that would help them with their solar and wind installations to help them smooth out and firm their power generation. You know, obviously, as we all know, you need batteries to do that. So they, they ran a worldwide search looking for the next big technology um, as aware as they were of the shortcomings of, of lithium. Um, they chose us and, and you know, we were really happy to have signed that contract and, and be able to take that to the next step. What it means is that we will be supplying them with a battery um, for technical people. It's a 100 kilowatt hour, 20 kilowatt, 25 kilowatt battery, something you know, that might be a few filing, you know, filing cabinets size, for example. Um, and that's, that will go into their facility for a six to 12 month trial period. Um, and following the, the success of that, um, we'll certainly, number one, you know, learn a lot from their input. We'll get a, a lot of great publicity, but also a successful trial positions us very, very well to be one of their suppliers as they roll out batteries wider and wider throughout their, their portfolio of assets. So you're looking for more of these sort of um, these these trials? Are, are, you, are you actively looking now for other companies that want to uh, trial your batteries? Hey, well, look, it's a funny question that we we don't need to look because we have so many companies approaching us um, for exactly the same reason. We, we we you know not to exaggerate here, we have more opportunities than we have ability to follow up. And so, you know, we, Asiona obviously being one of the world leaders was a great one for us. We've got three or four or five others. We've got three MOUs in place um, worth 400 megawatt hours. And all those three companies are all looking to trial our batteries. So, so for us, um, I don't see at all there being a problem of demand. It's, it's really just taking the batteries from where they are at the moment. You know, do, we've done deployments, we're scaling up manufacturing, and getting them into the hands of, of the customers because the customers are, are, are all calling out for these batteries. Yeah. But, but before we take a look at uh, where the company goes from here and your, your strategy as you uh, go into uh, the meet of 2022 uh, for the business, just wanted to quickly ask you about the consumer and how long you think, I mean, you're, a, you're an engineer, you're a chemical engineer, you in the sharp end of the technology. Um, as, as consumers, when is it, are we going to be able to get these sort of battery storage possibilities in our own homes? Is it something that is within our generation or is it a lot longer than that? Uh, certainly it should be in our generation, I hope so. Um, certainly I hope it's in my generation. Um, our first focus for the batteries is on the sort of scale from, you know, small, okay, I guess you call small scale industrial and beyond. Um, that's where our sweet spot is. Um, the kind of, again, for your technical listeners, the sort of 10 kilowatt hour and beyond into the megawatt hour and multi hundreds megawatt hour scale. The household battery market, while it's it's not, a, it, we are obviously very aware of it. It um, it's probably what we would call a horizon two target for us, only because the systems are quite small, the market's quite crowded and the regulatory hurdles are um, a lot more. So we, we see that we can sell out our capacity in the short term into that industrial, um, you know, small scale off grid and then moving into the larger grid connected. We see we can sell that. So it's not a no, it's just not our first um, short term target, but absolutely in our generation, I'd hope to see them in, in our houses. I look forward to that. Um, look, um, let me just quickly bring up a share price chart. Uh, you came to the market what back end of last year, 159, uh, 153 pence, I think it was, an IPO, which is the red dotted line here. Yep. You are trading below that. Um, 
What is the strategy going forward and, and, and to encourage investors from where you are now in terms of share price, market cap or whatever, what are you saying and what, what are you going to be doing over the next few months to try and encourage investor interest? Yeah, look, it was a bit of a crazy time post-listing. You know, the shares doubled or more than doubled in price and then came back down. And really, that was nothing to do, obviously nothing to do with the company or the company announcements or anything like that. It's really just more to do with who was buying and selling at the time. And, and really, the volumes have been very, very small. So I've sort of been encouraging people not to pay too much attention to the day-to-day -day fluctuations of that. Um, you know, we, we've got some very good in, uh, institutional support, and those guys are all here for the in, in, for the long run, and, and some of them will be looking to to increase their position. So, not 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 you know, obviously the share price we'd like to see it a lot more stable, but you know, when it's when it's trading on such small volumes, um, some days it, it's really you know a, a small retail uh, buy or sell can, can change things a lot. You know, our, our our focus we we don't need to raise money for a while, so so the share price is going to come into play um, from that perspective for some time um, and really our focus is on delivering the business plan uh, and, and and I know that once we do that the share price will will respond accordingly um, you know the market liked the announcement but you know markets have got fairly short attention span and, and um, we, yeah, we drifted back down again after that but look, we'll be we'll be putting out um, announcements regularly to, to chart our progress through the year you know, I in in the um, you know investment um, presentation that I gave, I outlined the sort of things that we're expecting to happen during this year, and and as we deliver on those, um, you know, I expect the share price to respond. Yeah, look, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Fascinating subject as well. Thanks for filling in all my own personal gaps in this understanding of the sector. But Andrew, it's a pleasure to be able to catch up with you and uh, and the progress at July as the chief executive of July and PLC, a London listed uh, battery technology company, Andrew Grimes. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.